Welcome to this interview for pilotforpulmonary.org. I'm Dr. Gary Ferguson, Director of the Pulmonary Research Institute of Southeast Michigan and Clinical Professor of Medicine at Michigan State University. Today with me I have Dr. Jim Donahue as an expert to discuss the new gold guidelines. Thank you, Gary. Yes, I'm a professor of pulmonary medicine at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, where I focus on COPD primarily. Great. So we've got some questions. I think this is an exciting time for us in COPD, especially with the new COPD 2017 guidelines. They've had some changes. They've talked a lot more about dual bronchodilation, llama labas or long-acting muscarinic antagonist, beta agonist. Tell me about that. Well, I think that's the major change in the new guidelines, the uh, uh, presence of or, or the positioning of lava llamas, uh, dual bronchodilator therapy uh, has been uh, really coming to the forefront. Uh, it is uh, first-line therapy, for example, or, uh, or just maybe one step up with a little arrow over monotherapy in goal B. Certainly in C, it would be considered first. And it's even an option for D with uh, uh, exacerbations, and that's from a study, the FLAME study, where the Lava Lama performed equally, uh, not inferior, but even superior to the traditional ICS uh, Lava formulation. And what's really interesting, if you look at uh, uh, the, uh, there's a wide variety of these agents now on the market. They have the properties of uh, once a day versus twice a day, some of them. There's in, they're in different devices from uh, pressurized meter dose inhalers to dry powder inhalers to soft mist inhalers. So we really have a lot of options here and their role is really going to increase in the near future. Okay, so what about triples? We, that's a big thing that we talk about when we're talking about the long-acting muscarinic antagonist, long-acting beta agonist, and an inhaled steroid. What's, what's going on with that now? Well, the triples, if you look at the gold D, is right in the center of the action there. Mm -hmm. And while you can start with a llama lava in, uh, uh, in D, and even a, perhaps a llama, because the, uh, the essence of D is the, the risk of exacerbations and hospitalizations and high symptoms, as, as, uh, uh, as you know. So uh, they're right in the center of that. Uh, the role of the ICS is a little bit diminished because instead of being earlier in the program, uh, now it's uh, really for people with exacerbations and symptoms, and it's uh, often recommended in a, uh, 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 as a triple therapy. Now, triple therapy will still be a major player, and in fact, we at the present time have to use open triples, mm -hmm. uh, namely combining two or more two two inhalers. In the near future, uh, we'll be having fixed triples where or closed triples where everything is in the one device. So, be able to take one puff and get the three different agents. But I, it's still very important, the triple, I believe, in perhaps a severe patients with uh, uh, the, the high risk of exacerbations and hospitalizations and a CAT score, as you mentioned earlier, the COPD uh, assessment test of greater than uh, 10 and a MMRC uh, of greater than two, which means you're short of breath, really just walking pretty, uh, uh, at a pretty easy pace. So uh, it's, it's a major role for them. So we have this whole switch in the algorithms now where we're talking about stepping up and stepping down. So you mentioned that triples are kind of right in the middle of D. That implies to me that they may not be the first step. Tell me about that. Right. The first step still is in the stepping up would be the Lama Lama, I believe, and in my view, because of the uh, very, very strong efficacy data that's uh, been available now, very good safety with not really any escalation going from one to two drugs on safety. They have properties like uh, uh, onset of action is quite good, duration of effect is quite good, and you have all these different choices. And it is fascinating. We're told to step up and step down now, but we now in the gold guidelines there, you'll see the the BCD with the arrows telling you a little bit about how to do that. And again, you can start you know small and then uh, go up, or if you're like to, you know, use everything at once and then step down. I'm from that school. I want to get the patient well as fast as I can. So I like to use if if it's a D triple and then perhaps step down. Is it really safe to step down? Well, I didn't know until the, uh, the recent uh, study and some other studies shown that it is actually safe. Not in everybody, uh, but in certain populations. And uh, studies showed that in uh, uh, patients who are on triple therapy, a cautious uh, removal of the ICS component 
uh, is, uh, is uh, perfectly adequate in some patients. Uh, you will not have a, a major increase in, uh, in exacerbations. You will lose a little bit of lung function. Now, that might not be right for everybody, and it might be that people with certain biomarkers might, uh, might not be able to do that, such as eosinophil counts that are high. So that's a, actually a great point because, you know, we're always looking for this uh, endotype. What is this marker that can help that's us right. instead of just looking at patients by symptoms or, or function? And so although that's what we do now, symptoms and exacerbations, that's one of the things we're looking at. So eosinophils, this is COPD. Why are we talking about eosinophils? That's an asthma problem. That's right. And, uh, and in fact, if you look at the eosinophil or TH2 inflammation, that's a feature of asthma. It is a feature, though, of some patients with COPD, and that would be a patient, some would be the asthma COPD overlap type or, or uh, people like that, people perhaps who had asthma before the age of 40, where uh, a reduction from triple, taking away the steroid might not be as safe. And so uh, one biomarker, and there's, we're looking for more uh, in COPD, but for that group, whether it's 20% or what it is, the eosinophil is a good biomarker. Now, the problem... Having said that, is what cut, what dichotomous point is uh, going to be important? Originally, GSK, with their looking back at all these uh, uh, landmark studies they did, and many you were in, uh, used 2% on the peripheral blood. Other studies, such as flame prospective studies, did not replicate that. Now, there's coming down to a, somewhat of a consensus around 300 cells per cubic millimeter and maybe 4% in the peripheral might be the biomarker somewhere in that ballpark. But every patient's different, as we know, and you have to individualize it. Yeah, and I really think that that's really, really important. So it's a clue. The, the data doesn't seem to be really absolutely solid to where we can do right. these uh, with a hard line above and below, but at least it's something to think about with that. Do you use that in your clinical practice? I really do, um, and I, I, I do always measure, in even in the COPD patients, I always look at the eosinophil count. Peripheral blood, and the reason it's hard to do the sputum, most labs commercially can't do a very good job of that or make any kind of quantitative uh, a statement about it. So, yes, I do it. So, so, I mean, honestly, then, we can talk about symptoms, we can talk about exacerbations, and an eosinophil count, which is something we can all get in our own office, right. those are all things that will help us as we clinically manage based on these new 2017 gold guidelines. That's really important. Thanks a lot for telling me and helping us out.